You don't need to spend hundreds of dollars on a new microphone to sound professional. In this video, we're going to give you seven tips that you can use with any microphone regardless of cost to make sure your audio quality is top notch. Number one, you need to monitor yourself while you record. This can be awkward and a lot of times people just getting into recording audio, they don't like to hear themselves while they talk. But hearing yourself while you record will help with these other tips, especially mic placement and technique. Plus, if the volume is too high or the gain is causing some peaking or distortion, you'll be able to hear that while you record and you won't have a ruined recording at the end that you can't do anything with. Even with an inexpensive USB microphone like this Audio-Technica ATR2100X, there is a headphone jack on the bottom of the microphone. After you connect your microphone to your computer via USB, you want to plug in wired headphones into this headphone jack. If you plug it into your computer, you won't be able to monitor your own voice as you record. So plug in a pair of wired headphones. They don't have to be expensive. They can just be the white headphones that came with maybe some of your Apple devices. Plug them directly into the microphone you're recording or into the audio interface that you're using. And then when you jump into a Riverside studio, choose your USB microphone as both your audio input and your audio output or speakers. This will allow you to hear your own voice and your remote guests through your headphones. Number two is mic placement. This is a huge deal. I'm actually going to switch to the audio for this microphone and you're going to hear it now. If I have the microphone really far away from my mouth, even in a sound treated room like I'm in right now, holding it this far away is not going to sound anywhere near as good as if I hold the microphone closer to my mouth. Now you don't want to get so close where you start hearing mouth sounds and it might start overdriving or you start hearing those little clicks and pops, but getting that microphone close to your face will get you a better sound than having it way down here. So pretty much no matter the microphone, do your best to get it as close to your mouth as possible before you start hearing those mouth sounds and more plosives. But we also have a tip to help eliminate those we'll get to in a second. Number three, you really want to use a stand or arm to hold the microphone. If you hold the microphone while you're recording, you're going to hear some clicks with the wire moving around, maybe your hand on the microphone, and it's not going to stay in that same consistent place all the time. This one actually comes with the Audio-Technica USB microphone that I'm talking about. Link will be in the video description. It slides into the microphone stand, and then you can put this on your desk. Again, try to get it as close to your mouth as possible, but that's a great way of having the microphone stay in the same place, and then you won't have all those hand noises or other movements. If you can invest a little more, you can get a microphone arm that either clamps to the desk or one that even is a floor standing microphone stand. This way you can get it really close to your mouth. You don't have to worry about hitting the desk and then the microphone moving. This will absorb any of those shocks and movements so you don't have to worry about that at all. We'll put links to several microphone arms and tabletop stands in the video description. Number four is speaking direction. Make sure you know which side of the microphone or what part of the microphone you should be speaking into for the best sounding audio. Take this Tula USB microphone for example. This one you're actually supposed to speak into the front of the microphone. I'm going to switch to this audio so you'll hear it. If I speak here in the front of the microphone, it'll sound good. But if for some reason I had this flipped around and I'm talking into the wrong side, or maybe I think I'm supposed to talk into the top like most other microphones, you're not going to get near as good a sound as if you speak into the proper angle of the microphone. But as you develop your microphone technique, you might be able to get a little closer, but more at a 45 degree angle at a microphone like this will eliminate some of those pop sounds if you don't have a windscreen. But tip number five, Get a windscreen for your microphone or a pop filter. We'll put links to some of these in the video description. Again, this one, it just goes over the microphone and will really help eliminate some of those mouth sounds, plosives, and the wind noise that's just coming out of your mouth as you speak. I mean, there are even some branded microphone windscreens out there. Number six, and this is getting a little more advanced, you need to make sure to check the gain or volume level of your microphone. This is different than the volume you'll be hearing in your headphones or the volume of your computer. Many times when you plug a USB microphone or an audio interface into your computer, Mac or PC, there's a separate audio input gain level. On a Mac, if you click the Apple icon in the top left and go to System Settings, click Sound in this left-hand sidebar, choose the audio input you'll be using, like our USB microphone here, and here the input volume you'll see is already set. If the meter is pretty low down here, I actually might want to raise this volume. You don't want it to be hitting the far right side, that might be peaking or overdriving. But as you speak into the microphone normally, you can adjust this gain level to make sure you have enough volume as you record. On a Windows PC, go into the system settings, then audio devices, and you'll see the same slider there. Now, if you record your content with Riverside here in the studio, you'll also see a volume meter, but Riverside will do its best to adjust that gain and volume level for you. If you need to lower it for any reason, or there's other guests that might seem louder than others as you record, you can adjust those volume levels here. But because you record with Riverside, you'll get an uncompressed wave audio file for every guest who's in the recording, and you'll have that full quality audio to edit later in any application you'd like. Number seven, the last tip to make any microphone sound professional is make sure you're aware of your environment. If you're in a very large or echoey room, 
Maybe there's not any furniture or carpeting. It can sound very echoey and reverby. Even expensive microphones won't sound great in that environment. Instead, try to find the best room that's most conducive to recording in your environment, your home, or maybe a co-working space. Make sure there's a carpet or rug, soft furniture, and if you can sound treat a room, that would be ideal too. If you're actually planning to build an in-home studio, we have an entire video for that. You could check it out above or in the description, show you all the kind of sound treatments you could do for doors, walls, even ceilings to make your recording environment the best possible. If you don't have those options and you don't have any sound treatment available, it may sound strange, but a walk-in closet is probably the best sound treated room in your house right now. Filled with soft material, no hard surfaces, hopefully you have a carpet or a rug in there, your microphone, whatever it is, will probably sound great in that room. Those are seven ways to help any microphone sound pro. Now, if you need help buying your next USB microphone, we have a video of our top seven. You can check that out above or in the description and subscribe to the Riverside channel. Lots of content on building a video podcast setup, using AI to streamline your workflow, and a ton more. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you in the next video.